yesterday we saw some amazing scenes in Parliament as the government lost three votes in quick succession and the papers are in uproar. Uh, it's chaos. Things. Uh, it's certainly unprecedented and as an anarchist I, I find it amusing when people start explaining that the system we have is chaotic because anarchism isn't actually. Uh, and uh, yeah it's just, just fantastic and obviously I'm obsessed with British politics so uh, I find it all, all very, very entertaining, actually. Entertaining as well as a little bit, you know. It, it, it is exciting because it is so unusual. But it's also incredibly entertaining as an anarchist to watch this shambolic performance. Uh, first of all, one thing to note, it's actually it's not chaos at all. Uh, it's the Constitution working as it should work. We have what we call in this country <coughs> uh, the sovereignty of Parliament. And one thing that MPs don't like is when a government just rides roughshod over them. And there are some particularly principled uh, MPs on the Conservative side, people like Peter Bone, uh, who hate to see uh, Parliament um, treated in a disdainful way. Um, they're often compared, actually, those people to people on the left as well, like Tony Benn was always principled on the same matter. Um, so what we saw yesterday actually was Parliament taking control, which is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be uh, the place which rules. <laughs> so if the government isn't doing things correctly, Parliament will step in. And what you had was a situation where Parliament informed the government that it should release uh, details of its uh, legal advice on Brexit, and it failed to do so. So consequently, what happened was Parliament forced the issue. And then, obviously, Parliament forced the issue on a couple of other things as well, which uh, basically mean that if the government um, loses the vote next week on the Brexit deal, then Parliament has a greater say in, in what happens. And what we're seeing is a perfect illustration, actually, of the arithmetic of the House of Commons being so close. Because the government ha doesn't have a uh, majority, um, it is in the nature of things that, that you will get amendments and votes that are incredibly close and could swing and end up with the government being defeated. That is how, that's how business is going to get done. This, this is what happens when you're in such a, a, a difficult situation that you have to compromise. The problem with all of this is that Theresa May is not in the mood to compromise. She could actually find a way through all of this Brexit mess. This is why it's so entertaining, because she's so so stuck in her ways. She could actually seek a compromise. She could find a way to get the vast majority of MPs on her side. She keeps saying something very, very interesting in Parliament that's worth watching out for. She keeps talking about this Parliament giving the people a vote in a referendum. This Parliament didn't do that. It was the last Parliament that did that. This Parliament has been voted in, in 2017 after the referendum. So she keeps talking about this parliament, it's just not the case. This parliament should actually be taking control in relation to the arithmetic of the House of Commons, which is what it's doing. And she's failing to notice, actually, that there's been a drastic change. She called an election in 2017 and it was a disastrous result for her. And she hasn't adapted to that. She has stuck steadfastly to her own view of the world and actually there there will be a majority in parliament for a particular thing it's probably actually a second referendum but <laughs> she can't do that because she's all the way through stuck to this idea that brexit is brexit the parliamentary arithmetic has changed highly entertaining it's going to run and run we've got another week before well this time next week we will know how people have voted in the um on the meaningful vote and whether that's been voted down, and it looks like it's going to be. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, uh, just enjoy the chaos. It's so entertaining, but it actually isn't chaos. It's people just getting on with their jobs, really. Uh, it's not quite as exciting as people are making out. But what it can lead to is so many different permutations. Um, you know, there could be a general election, there could be who knows, there could even be 48 letters going to, uh, going to the chair of the 1922 committee, but you know, that doesn't seem to have worked very well, does it? Um, 
so again, you've got the situation where you know a leadership challenge is uh, is on the table, but not necessarily on the cards, and um, and whether she would, you know, win a vote of no confidence, who who knows? Um, but it is it is uncharted territory, as as I've been talking about for weeks now. Um, we've never seen anything like it. Uh, for for the government to be in contempt of Parliament, that's quite quite serious. Whether any ministers will actually have to be sanctioned in any way uh, remains to be seen. Um, but in the meantime, I think over the next week or so, we can expect expect the unexpected. Um, there's lots of people who are just saying, this is definitely going to happen and that is definitely going to happen. Nobody knows. And that's also quite entertaining, the speculation. Um, uh, the <laughs> To be a to be a presenter on uh, on the twenty four hour news channel is just endless speculation, and then occasionally reality kicks in. This is this is the wonderful thing. You've got all of this theory about how the British Constitution works. Well, the practice is always slightly different from the theory. Uh, one thing we do know is that governments with uh, with a minority in Parliament tend not to last a full five year term. Uh, if it does last a full five year term, then we can expect more of this. Really. Um, but the chances are it won't. <clears throat> the chances are we're seeing uh, Theresa May's government in a very, very slow and painful death.